<clears throat> Hello, boys, and welcome back to the Byron Post. If you've tuned in before, then hey, welcome back, honestly. Um, if this is your first time tuning in, if this is your first time finding me, then strap in, you're in for a doozy here. This video is not going to be like my other ones. This is going to be more of rant after today's loss to Augsburg. Today's loss to Augsburg away. My God. And this is going to be just me opening up and being completely honest and giving my raw and filtered opinions. Absolutely no edits in this video. There's not going to be any music in the background. It's just going to be me speaking my mind because honestly, what happened today is inexcusable and it should have never happened. We should have never lost in the way that we did to Augsburg away. And let me tell you why I said that already three times and why it's so important. We have not lost to Augsburg away in over seven years. This is the first time in over seven years that we have done so. Bayern loses to Augsburg away 2-1 to one today. Now, let me tell you why that shouldn't have happened. The big elephant in the room. A lot of our players are out because they need to isolate. They may have been in contact with people who had COVID. Um, we know the situation. Some of our, some are unvaccinated. It is, you know, it is what it is. Some of the players that are out consist of, and I believe the three main ones today that, that really hurt us, Kimmich, Stanisic, and Sula. Now, Stanisic a lot, and I want to touch on him real quick because... Today, if we see Pavard's performance, it wasn't good enough. And again, it, we should have known this already, okay? Pavard isn't good enough to play as Bayern Munich's right back. It's just, it's not, there shouldn't even be a debate at this point anymore. He had a great run of form in the 2019-20 season, but he has not been able to find that again. He is not up to par to play in this team in that position. Honestly, I believe that he should go back to being a center back. Either that or we sell him. Because he is not the quality that we need for this team. You cannot convince me of that after this game. He had a lot of chances where he, he needed to close down the opponent and he didn't do it fast enough. He didn't react fast enough. He didn't close down fast enough. He gave the ball away in a lot of, a lot of instances. He played way too much today. Honestly, I would have preferred that Sar came on in the second half. Like, call me crazy, but too bad Stenisic was out. He's isolating. I hope this proves to everybody, all Bayern fans, that Stenisic needs to play. He needs to start. And I know that Sule can also play in that position. And some of you might be saying, oh, no, no, I prefer Sule. Listen to me. No, 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 no. We need, we need to get that out of our minds. Okay. And, and there's a clear reason why. Specifically because Stanisic is very young and he can still develop. He is very promising. He has a lot of potential in my opinion. He could be our right back for the next goddamn decade. Either that or if we play Sule instead of him, we could stunt his growth. We can stunt Stanisic's growth and, or worse yet, lose him to another club. And I don't want Stanisic to go to another club and then become a fucking baller and we look like idiots. I don't want that to happen. So we need Stenisic to play when he's back. I I really don't feel like that should even be a debate at this point anymore. Like, but that's not even the cause of concern for me. Uh, believe it or not, the rant hasn't even started. <laughs> because this, this is the main focus for me today. Today's game was lost, and yes, teams lose sometimes. It happens from time to time. Nobody is going to win all the goddamn time it doesn't happen i understand that i understand but today's loss should have not happened specifically because the main man we were missing today is joshua kimmich in the defensive midfield position as the double pivot partner for goretzka the reason why we miss them so much is because goretzka obviously needs that double pivot partner we saw it clear as day today and who does Julian Nagelsmann pick so he can do that job? He picks Marcel Sabitzer. 
Now, we all know, listen, I like Sabitzer. I really do. He's a fan of the club. I'm glad that he's here with us. And I believe he'll come good. He has the quality, the potential to come good. But he is not a defensive midfielder. He cannot play that DM position at the level that we need him to. That's not his position. Bro, we're, we're sabotaging this man by playing him there. Julian Nagelsmann should have never played Sabitzer in that position. But you know why he does? Because at this point, it should be apparent to everybody. Sabitzer, I mean, <laughs> Julian Nagelsmann clearly has a comfort zone. And this comfort zone is called Marcel Sabitzer and Corentin Tolisso. Those two are his comfort zone outside of Kimmich and Goretzka. There's one name missing from that list. Mark Roca. That name, that man, is the focus of this video. The reason for this rant. Because Mark Roca should have started today. He should have started in the defensive midfielder position today. Because we had not we didn't have Kimmich as an option. And in my opinion, Mark Roca is his clear backup. He should be his clear substitute. It, the, the back of her defensive midfielder position. But instead of doing that, Julian Nagelsmann instead opts to play Marcel Sabitzer. Okay, you know what? Fine, I say. I say fine. Let it be that way. He starts Sabitzer, okay? But then after the shambolic, disastrous performance that he has, giving the ball away as well. And, <laughs> and then... Sabitzer and Pavard are combining together. I mean, it was clear as day that Augsburg was just ripping us a new one down that right-hand side, and they were exploiting Sabitzer because he was basically non-existent. He wasn't a good... He's, he's not a good teammate to play alongside Goretzka in the double pivot. He's not. And they were exploiting us. They got two goals on us by exploiting those two specifically. Okay. Halftime comes around, Lewandowski gets a brilliant goal to pull one back. We're 2-1 down at halftime. This is when Nagelsmann had to sub on Mark Roca, but he doesn't do that. He makes no substitutions at halftime, and instead, he keeps the, the exact same team. But then, once he finally makes the substitutions, he does bring off Sabitzer, which I believe was the right call. But what does he do? Does he bring on Tolisso? Does he bring on Mark Roca? No. He doesn't even try to bring on Tolisso, which I believe would have been an error, by the way. But he doesn't bring on Roca either. Instead, he brings on Musiala, and he takes off Richards to bring on Davies. But he changes to a back three and pushes Davies up and puts Musiala somewhere in the middle and left mid, doing this weird hybrid position. And then he leaves Goretzka completely isolated by himself, controlling the midfield. Goretzka looked completely frustrated after that. I mean, he had he had to work his ass off. And he was making some great plays. Goretzka, don't discredit him because he was trying really hard. We, we could tell. But we could also tell that he needed the double pivot partner. He didn't have that. So, so listen, let me paint the picture in your mind real quick. Julian Nagelsmann and our coaching staff really sat there after halftime and they looked at our entire bench. They looked at all of our options on the bench. They saw Mark Roca sitting right there, ready to come on. Because we, we know he's ready. He said it before. Because he's been asked. He's been asked about his situation. He's been asked if he believes he should leave the club. If he wants to leave the club. Because he's been linked with other clubs now. And Mark Roca says that he has not once thought about leaving. Because moving to Bayern has been a dream. It's been a dream move of his, and he wants to prove himself here. He has a fighting spirit. He has that Mia San Mia mentality. I mean, another picture I'm going to paint for you real quick before we go back to the substitutions that could have been made. Mark Roca could have gone with Spain to play in the Olympics before this season. Instead, he turned that down. He said no. You know why? Because Mark Roca wanted to stay back and train. Get himself ready for this for this season. He basically had like a goddamn Rocky montage because he bulked himself up like Oretzka did. Like seriously, he went he underwent a crazy transformation. We we can see 
Now, Mark Rocco now is not the same as Mark Rocco from last season. But we don't know how good he's improved. Because we haven't seen him play one single minute this season. I mean, seriously, think about that. How insane is that? Go back and watch today's performances by Tabitzer. And then please come back and tell me that you honestly believe that Mark Rocco would have done a worse job in that position. With a straight face, tell me. From an unbiased point of view. Because let me tell you, I'm being unbiased too. Even if you believe I'm being biased. If Sabitzer could do it, I would love that. I would be praising him right now. But he can't. He's not a defensive midfielder. We needed a defensive midfielder today to play alongside Goretzka in the double pivot. And even after Roca gave up going to the Olympics with Spain. To get more exposure for himself. To transform and train to get ready for this season to play for us how do we repay him not even playing him today like i was saying before our coaching staff saw roca on the bench and they said fuck you basically because today should have been the game when roca should have played and he doesn't play this is how insane is that like, I, I, <laughs> oh it boggles my mind. My mind is contorting in like six different ways trying to understand this. Like seriously. He doesn't use him. He doesn't bring him on. Instead, like I said, he brings on Jamal Musiala, which I don't knock at all. I, I honestly believe Musiala should have should have came on. Yes, I believe Musiala should have played. But instead, he should have brought, brought on for Grabri. Honestly, I don't believe Gnabry deserved to play the entire 90 minutes. Like, Musiala should have came on for Gnabry on the right. And Roca should have came on for Sabitzer. But instead, he brings on Musiala and Davies and changes, like I said, the formation to this weird Frankenstein abomination. And I do call it that because we had no goddamn identity afterwards. Our players didn't know what to do. They looked confused out there. I mean, Goretzka was completely isolated. Sané was doing his best to bob and weave through. He made some great runs. Musiala was making some great runs. Lewandowski was completely, I mean, visibly frustrated. I mean, he, he, we could see it wasn't working out there. Our players didn't know what to do. And you're really going to tell me that our coaching staff, as experienced and as knowledgeable as they are, they really believed that doing that, making that weird fucking change was better than bringing on Mark Roca for the defensive midfield position to play alongside Goretzka in the double pivot in like the 60th or 65, 65th minute with a lot of game time still to play you, you're you really going to tell me that in their infinite wisdom they thought that was the best choice listen to me I love Julian Hobbesman, I really do and I honestly do believe that he's progressed and made our team better than what Flick left us with our first team, and I'm going to say that again, our first team, when everybody's fit, he's improved us by a, a quite good margin, I believe, even defensively. I mean, I love Nagelsmann. He, he's obviously a good tactician. But today, he got it completely wrong. He beat himself. Today was a Nagelsmann disaster class. And if nobody else on the coaching staff tried to convince him to bring on Roca, then it's their fault as well. I'm talking about top mover. I forget I forget the other assistant coach. But if they really couldn't get Nagelsmann to bring on Roca, then it's all their faults. All of them are to blame today. It's a Nagelsmann disaster class today because he beat himself. He wasn't even outcoached. He wasn't outcoached in my opinion. He just sabotaged himself by not bringing on Roca. I mean, let's be serious here. And I know some of you are going to say, this is Augsburg. We're still, we're still ahead in, in the Bundesliga. Yeah, but listen, we, <laughs> we let Augsburg make history today. For the first time in over seven years, we haven't lost to them at their home stadium in over seven years. And we let them beat us today. Now let them, let them beat us today. And it goes on just beyond Augsburg. Because you saw what happened today? Kimmich missing? What if something happens with COVID again? He has to isolate again. 
What if he gets injured? God forbid. What if he gets injured for, let's say, two to three weeks, a month? What if what if he's not available in the playoffs, in the playoff knockout stages uh, in the Champions League? The goddamn playoffs. In, in, yeah, in the knockout stages of the Champions League. Let's say we're in the quarterfinals versus Liverpool in the knockout stages, and Kimmich isn't available. Who are we going to use then? We're going to bring on Sabitzer again? <laughs> we're going to bring on Tolisso? I mean, let's, let's be serious. The reason that this is a serious issue is because we need to correct this right now. This game needs to serve as a learning point. Our coaching staff needs to learn. We need to hold our coaching staff accountable. I love to praise them when they get it right, and they have done on many occasions. With the first team, they've improved them by leaps and bounds. So I appreciate them on that. But we also have to stop making excuses for them. First of all, don't let them get away with the slap on the wrist. We have to hold them accountable as a fan base. Because there is no way, listen, there's no way I'm more of a brilliant tactician than Nagelsmann is. There's, it's, it's not possible, right? So how can I see this? I feel like I'm the only one who sees this as well. Because I don't see any other Bayern fans tweeting about this. Talking about it on social media. And I believe I'm the only one who's going to make a video on this. Now, honestly, there's no way that I'm the only one who sees this, though. I probably just haven't seen everybody else's opinions, but we need to be more vocal as a fan base because at some point, our voice has to matter. We have to let our board, our coaching staff, our team know that they need to play Mark Roca. They need to give this man some play time. Because look at all that he's done to sacrifice and to try to prove. Even if you go on Bayern's official YouTube channel and you see some of the public training videos that they have up there, you can see when they show Mark Roca, he's he's working his ass off. He's training. The man is bulked up. I mean, listen, let me paint this picture for you real quick. Imagine if today we would have been able to see Oretzka and Mark Roca playing together. The physicality of that just... There's no way that Augsburg would have been able to play through us. There is no way. That's what should have happened. But it didn't. It didn't. At this point, we even have to wonder, does our coaching staff have something against Marroca? Is there some agenda within the club that we don't know? Did they completely write him off after he missed that penalty versus Kiel last season? Guess who else missed penalties for us in crucial moments? Arjen Robin, Thomas Mueller. Two huge legends, just off the top of my head. And, I mean, come on, are we really going to judge him off of that? We, do, we haven't given him a chance this season. Just to be a little bit more petty here, this month, November, is Mark Roca's birth month. His birthday is on, is on November 26th, in seven days from now, one week from today. And he can't even get some game time today when he needed to, when we needed him to. Because don't get it twisted. We needed Mark Roca today, and he didn't play. Today was a Julian Nagelsmann disaster class. And we have to be honest about it. We have to hold them accountable. We need our team to play Mark Roca. Because what happens if we don't? Like I said, what happens in the, in the knockout stages if we can't use Kimmich because of some illness, or he's injured. What are we going to do? We're going to capitulate? We're going we're gonna to embarrass ourselves out there? I don't want that to happen. I don't know about you, but that is not the Bayern way. And, and the lack of identity when we change like, in, in our entire formation today, that is not the Bayern way either. I don't want to see that again. Like, seriously. And all why? Because he didn't want to play Mark Roca. It's that simple. He didn't want to. We have to critique them. We have to. Because he was he was available. It's not like Stanisic who was not available. He wasn't available today. So we had to play Pavard. Or Sar. We played Pavard. But come on. I hope you guys agree with me. I hope some of you do at least. If you do, I mean, hey, please share this video with any other Bayern fans that you have, that, that you know. Uh, any of your other friends, uh, share this with whoever. And please, 
even if you don't share it, what I do ask you, go out there on your social media and campaign for this. Please campaign for this man, Marco Roca, to be used. Because at some point, as a fan base, our, our voice has to be heard. They have to hear our voices. There is no way, like I'm saying, no way in hell that this coaching staff doesn't see it. They have to, even if they wrote him off before, for the better of the team, they have to play him. Either that or what are we going to do? We're going to go out in the January transfer window, in the winter transfer window, and buy a backup defensive midfielder for cheap? Because let me tell you, we're not going to get anyone of quality who might be a flop, who might throw the games when we need him to. And when we haven't even given Mark Roca a chance, are we, are we really going to do that? Are we going to sell Mark Roca for a loss, may I add, without even seeing how good he is, and then see him become a fucking baller somewhere else? Is that what we want? I don't want that. I, I don't know about you, but I do not want that. And yes, these opinions, like I said, again, these were my raw opinions. WWE raw on, on some... <sighs> oh, my God. That, that's that's what I had to say today. I hope you guys agree. And we need to turn this around. Marco Roca needs to play. Stanisic needs to be our starting right back. I mean, what more needs to be said? I hope you guys agree. If you don't, let me know. If you do, like I said, please share the video. Give it a like. Subscribe if you guys enjoyed <laughs> my rant. If you want to hear more about it, you know, more rants in the future. Or, or just if you want to hear my, my opinions. Because I usually give good match opinions, you know match review but today what is there to review i mean i needed to say this you know so i still have hope but we as a fan base need to get active as well and, and have our voices heard besides that though i hope you guys have a good weekend mia san mia this has been the byron post and i'm out